add to it, but that, that can give you some cool effects. Um, I do kind of, I'm showing a little bit of the leaves come popping out. Those I don't want to be dark value. I want to separate the dark value from the leaves that are popping out. Uh, if I make a mistake, uh, I can always go back in with my bristle brush and remove paint. So I'm going to uh, kind of go in here and add some dark values where there's shadows. And I don't have to be super particular. I'm just kind of, because I drew it so loosely, I can make things up as I go along. I'm not being a slave to my reference. If you want to be, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's not what I'm doing right now. Um, especially since it's not my reference. This is just for demo purposes. I'm not, um, I'm not going to do anything with this. It's just going to remain... Um, a demo, just an example. A little bit of dark value in this area too. Sometimes when you're painting, it's a little hard to see where you actually applied liquid mask it. But then when you see um, where it gets dark, I mean where it re starts to repel the paint, um, and that might be where, like I don't want it to be repelling the paint so much, I'm going in with the darker before I go in with the green on this side. Just because really I didn't add any and I should have. I should have continued that. Oh, sorry. I, I moved the camera so I could see better. Keep forgetting what I'm doing. Okay. Add a little bit of green to that. Now the uh, sidewalk area, now you can see where this was still wet, so it just blended in instead of, you know, just the little areas that I wanted dark value. When you're trying to build up your values, you don't want it to get watered down, okay? So you wanna make sure that that layer is dry. And, I, and to tell if it's dry, you just kinda touch it like that. And if it feels a little bit damp, you're probably gonna get a little bit of bleeding but that can be kind of fun too, you know, just that little bit of bleeding. This doesn't appear to be bleeding, even though it felt somewhat damp. Um, it was mostly dry, so I can kind of go in here and get little, you know, detail-y type areas. Um, that's what you, if you like to draw with your paint, you can. And you notice I have stuck with the same round brush. And this one's even a little bit distorted because of, probably because I didn't let it dry, you know, the way, it, I didn't shape it before I dried it. And these brushes travel with me, so, um, you know, they don't get treated the best. I do always wash my brushes really good with soap and water. I don't care if you're using watercolor. Um, your brushes will last longer if you wash them really good with soap and water. So I'm adding a little bit of the dark value up in here. Probably what I will do is I will um, maybe do another one with time lapse because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me do this whole thing. Um, and I want to demonstrate some other techniques too. So I, I could probably do that right now. Um, some of the fun things to do... Um, is use a, there's a different resist technique and uh, it's with a wax crayon. Uh, you can use any color of crayon if you want. This is a clear wax. And the trick with this is that if you sketch out something and then use it, uh, it's going to smear your pencil and it will remain that way because you don't really remove wax once you apply it. You do remove the liquid mask it after you apply it, um, after you're done painting and you're ready to move on to the next level, um, you will remove it. And I just, you can use a, like a rubber cement eraser or I just use my finger and I just rub it off, but you better make sure it's completely dry. You also have to be careful because if there is paint resting on top, um, you could smear that paint 
if it's not completely dry, sometimes even when it's completely dry, it can smear a little bit. So just be really careful. Um, anyway, um, so I, um, I will, I will just kind of do like a, like maybe a flower shape. There is a, a clematis flower that I took a picture of and I can just do the outside of it. You can also color in with the crayon and paint over it. And it has a very different, um, and I'm looking through the, the phone right now, so it's very weird. It feels weird. Um, I hope I, it's like doing a blind contour, kind of. I hope I end up where I began because I can't really see. And that's the pitfall of not using, um, if you look at it from the side a little bit, you can kind of see. I don't know if I can get the, the camera to quite, you can see a little bit of the glistening, you know, but again, you, you need to know what you're doing and maybe you don't care. I can show you what the pencil looks like smeared. Um, I'll do it up here. I'll just do one, one leaf. So, you can see how it kind of smears that, that pencil. That's going to stay that way. <laughs> you can, after you're done painting, you can, you know, scrape off with your fingernail. Uh, but it's not ideal to do that. You pretty much just count on leaving that. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to do the... I'm going to use a angle brush, the big one, getting it a little bit wet before I go into my paint. And I'm going to use the ultramarine red shade, just kind of. And I'm just going to paint over that area just so you can see what that effect does. So that's kind of cool. Um, so let's see what... <laughs> I might want to add a little bit of red. Well, do as I say and not as I do. I'm going to go ahead with my dirty brush and go into this permanent rose. Because um, I wanted a little bit more of a purpley look to it. Use a little bit of the dirty water. Because I know I use mostly blues and reds. So that's a nice purple. So let's see. I honestly cannot even see where the wax is right now. So... So let's just say, oh, well, I didn't meet up. Wow, that was like a blind contour. I totally missed this one. Oh, no, I did. I did get a little bit of the, almost met up. <laughs> so now if I want to kind of go back in with a clean brush while it's still wet, and let's see, let me take a smaller angle brush and I'll use the clean water. And you can kind of do some painting with just the water. You want to keep, have a clean rag and keep, uh, Keep cleaning it, blotting it, so that you're not just moving paint around, you're actually removing some paint. A little easier to do when it's still somewhat wet. Um, but if you let it dry, you can also remove. It's never going to be the white of the paper, but I like the soft quality of it. can remove as much as you want. You could even remove all of this if you wanted to and just kind of, if you want to remove even more, then you blot it with a clean rag. And it'll just have a really faint kind of a lilac color to it. Also, if you make mistakes, it's, it's a nice, um, and the, the paper's starting to pill a little bit. I noticed the Strathmore papers, even the best, is, the quality's kind of declining a little bit. Um, see how I'm blotting it up? 
and it's really removing a lot of that paint. So pay attention when you're using water, when you're scrubbing out, that you're not actually pulling up the paper. Canson is even worse for that. Grab that brush again. So